Hello and welcome to another episode of Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me tonight is Cole Monroe. Hello. Is it hot enough for you, Cole? It's only 105. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sweating. I'm sitting inside in air conditioning and I'm sweating. So we actually we got into a little bit of a habit of... Uh, podcasting every week with you but we gave you a week off did you feel was that a little weird yeah it was weird but my schedule didn't really work out um <laughs> so i missed it I we have some replacements like I... for you though yeah aaron and justin yeah they filled in they were not cole but they filled in yeah i haven't listened to it yet so i can't make any <laughs> i can't make any rational judgments but i can make some you know, irrational judgments on the quality of that podcast. Um, kind of, kind of upset that uh, I had fill-ins, but I understand it <laughs> happens. Well, we're still trying to figure out uh, when to get this show going. We're actually recording on uh, Tuesday, June fourth this week. We're gonna try to do these on Mondays or Thursdays. Um, yeah, Game Seven got in the way last night. So. Yeah, yeah, it did. That was not worth it. Um, no, which, it was not. Which kind of brings me to a funny story about Game 6. Uh, so, I haven't watched much of the Pacers, and our, and Indianapolis hasn't watched much of the Pacers, really, uh, until this, this playoff series. Um, but I had a lot of fun this weekend, because we, for the first time in I don't know how long, I actually went out to a sports bar, or the Colts Grill in this case, to watch the game among a bunch of other people, um, and some of my friends. And just because I cut the I cut the cord at home, no cable, and all these games are still on TNT, and that's a pain in my ass. But I won't talk about the sports stuff, but I will talk about the Colts grill and the fact that they have a DJ at all times during the evenings. So every screen in this place obviously has the, uh, the game going. And it took us a while to realize that any time there was a timeout or a break in the game, like when they would cut to commercial the DJ in this restaurant would mix in his own music. And, like, it was, it was almost like he was That's presenting really the game. Weird. And it was it was so bizarre. Uh, we didn't catch it until a trailer for the World War Z came on, and all and then all we heard was Mambo Number no. 5. You don't think that's uh, the song in the trailer? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, with the chick from The Killing and Brad Pitt um, running away from zombies, I think Mom It was pretty Bob funny. I actually recommend watching that mix. Song. <laughs> but uh, it was a little, little bit overdone, and they had a free throw competition um, at halftime or something. It was just... Um, it, Did you it win was, it? Well, I didn't even participate. I'm over for life. You Come know on, me. Come on, basketball. <laughs> No, I my basketball psyche was destroyed by our high school basketball coach, so it's never really <laughs> recovered. Um, on to more nerdy things, though. I wanted to talk to you um, since you have read all the Game of Thrones books. I have not. You haven't actually. read them. Uh, where? No, I've read one and a half of them. Okay, then never mind. Then never mind. Yeah, we can't talk about Sunday either. So all I will say is um, we all know something major happened. The my bit of entertainment from social media came from all the people that were trying to avoid spoilers. Like they thought they were, they they thought they were doing like everybody a favor and being nice and not spoil spoiling it, but obviously spoiling it. Like the people that are right. are bad at it. Like there's the there's the jerks that piss everybody off and just spoil it for everybody, and then there's people that don't talk about it. But it's these people in between that are just really really aggravating. It was like you're. Between the hints you're giving me and the hints your friend are, is giving me, I can figure all of this out. Um, but luckily well, what's I... Really, what's really stupid to me is... And I, I get that it's great storytelling that people get really attached to certain characters and um, whatever, certain things that might happen throughout the story. Like I I, I kind of know what happened, but I don't at the same time. and I really avoid, try to avoid the, uh, the spoilers. Mm -hmm. But you gotta, th and I'm gonna spoil something if you haven't seen season one. But easy, if okay. You, <laughs> just I'm give, just I'm giving everybody a, uh, a break to pause yeah. it if they need to. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. If you haven't seen season one or read the first book, there's gonna be a spoiler here. If they're gonna kill off 
Sean Bean. Mm-hmm. There will kill everybody. <laughs> so just be prepared. That's all and you're good. All right. Letting chat know that it's safe now. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I just and anything goes in this series, and that's 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 fun. So uh, I was surprised. I have managed to avoid like the two the two big incidents so far. Uh, somehow, I'm really, really glad I caught up though, because this one's gonna be hard to dodge the way people are talking about it. So yeah, I need to. I just I've I've been like I've been really debating like all right, I don't have like if I start to read, I just fall asleep at this point in my life. Um, not that I don't like reading, it's just I'm just super tired all the time and it just puts me to sleep. So like my options are audiobook or just watch the show and not read the book. But the first book is amazing. The second, the first half of the second book that I've actually read twice now is also amazing, uh, but I just can't get. I don't know what it is. I just get distracted. So I've I've kind of come to the conclusion that I just need to watch the show, <laughs> and um, my wife and I watched the first season, and so now I'm like debating whether or not to wait for her to watch the second season. But if I wait for her, I might never watch it. And now like I'm hearing all these awesome things, or like it's pissing these people off. Like I kind of want to watch it just to see for myself. Yeah, but at the same time, that the whole book, like, I need to. I don't know. I know, like, uh, my, HBO my theory. Will be there. My theory is he's already kind of admitted that the TV show is going to lap the books in the end. So yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, all the people kind of coming out and uh, saying read the books that that never affects me. So what have you been up to? So um, well, in the past two weeks, I kind of watched uh, a couple movies that were very similar in. Uh, nature in terms of like possible violence or whatever but um i watched zero dark 30 Mm -hmm. um, last week we rented it on the apple tv and for knowing kind of the the finish of that story (laughs) and you know surfacely knowing everything that surrounds it um that movie's pretty tense and um i thought it was really well done I think... It's entertaining? Uh, so, <laughs> I really liked um, Catherine Bigelow's movie before this, and I can't think of what it's called. Hurt Locker. Hurt I haven't Locker. watched that one yet. I really liked that one a lot, and I think I liked it better than Zero Dark Thirty. But I kind of, like, uh, I don't know. It's just... It, it, you don't feel good watching it. I know that. You, you don't <laughs> When it's done, you don't feel better <laughs> i mean like yeah we you know killed this horrible man but it's just yeah i don't know like um jp just said in the chat is her locker's way more rewatchable i totally agree um, i don't know if i want to ever go back to yeah like i've never Dark 30. i mean it i don't know it's cool that it exists but there's nothing in me that wants to watch that i don't know it's yeah. just I, I think it would be, for me, it would be more like, and I know it's based on certain people and all that stuff, but I think I would rather have, like, this is actually what fucking happened, not <laughs> speculative fiction, I guess. Yeah. Did you watch um, no, Did you watch Argo? Yes. Yeah. I really liked Argo. Okay. But I'm kind of... Um, but they did more, I mean, they, they set the stage for more creative freedom with that, I think. They did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm a, I like Ben Affleck, so... I don't care what people say about that dude. I think he's a good. I actor. thought he was. Um, I damn thought he was it! Great in a... <laughs> the bo- the bomb and yeah, never mind. He was the bomb in Argo as well. And Phantoms, yeah. All right, so yeah, another uh, another movie I watched. I just watched this Sunday morning. You know, good wake up early Sunday morning, and let's watch End of Watch. Which I'm one's off. that? That is the Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, I forget the other guy's name. Mike Michael Pena or something. I don't know something Pena. Um, and it has uh, uh, some I, man. I'm terrible at this. Um, anyway, it's about like it's kind of a uh, it's a <laughs> like a ride along cop show. Like he's Jake Gyllenhaal Hall says he's ha- has this class. Okay. He's taking a film class, and so he's recording all the videos. So it's like a kind of like a it's not a found footage film, but it's kind of shot like that. Okay, and um, but there are also like regular cameras. And so it's it's kind of weird how they play through the two cameras, but um, 
what the, the best thing about the end of watch is the relationship between Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena. Yeah, and uh, thanks, JP. Anna Kendrick and America Ferrer are also in okay. it. Okay. Um, as the two ladies. Um, but yeah, like their relationship is so fucking realistic. Like, you think they've been friends for 20, 25 years huh. before they were just, you know, thrown together to film this movie. Like, that's how good their chemistry was. Um, and. Like, that part was super entertaining. Um, my wife walked in on, like, the last third of the movie, and she was completely horrified because it is really, really violent. <laughs> um, so it's not necessarily, like, a wake-up-on-Sunday-morning kind of movie, I guess. Unless you're Cole Monroe. <laughs> yeah, unless you're me, and I'm like, well, let's see. My wife's going to stay asleep for a lot longer than I'm going to, you know, I'm already awake at 6.30 in the morning. She's probably not going to watch this movie anyway, so I'm just going to watch it. And then she ends up waking up and... <laughs> yeah, she was not pleased with. Thanks it for that. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I just thought it was. It was surprisingly well put together, in my opinion. Like I did not know necessarily what to expect when I remember seeing the trailers for it, but it was really good. I highly recommend it. It's it's a really interesting story. Huh. And is that like I said, the relationship is really good between the two actors. Is that Netflix or is that uh, Amazon? Yeah, it's on. It's on Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I haven't yeah, so been. Check it out. I haven't watched a Jill and Hall movie in, in, in a minute. I think what I saw, uh, Source Code, was the last one. So oh, wow. yeah. I liked it. I like that movie. I like that movie too. All right, let's get on to video games. Uh, this is an interactive show. Uh, every 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 time we're every afternoon before we broadcast top video game podcast, we'll post a series of questions on our Facebook page, um, and mainly we're just looking for your game of the week. And the worst and best of the week for you in gaming. And uh, we'll read them here on air and also go through ours. Um, so let's kick it off with your game of the re- week, Cole. My game of the week is Sleeping Dogs. Sleepy uh, Dogs. Sleepy Dogs. I got a Sleepy Dog in here right now. Um, so if you guys don't know what it is, it's a, it's kind of like an open world sandbox GTA type game, but in set in Hong Kong. Um and it, it kind of had a uh, pretty eventful development history. Um, it was supposed to be a sequel to what was that game called? Uh, the one with like um, oh, uh, true crime. True crime. Yeah, it was supposed to be a true crime sequel, and it kind of got sold to a different studio or something, and they re- reworked it. And um, and then I saw it was like five dollars on Steam. Or on uh, Green Man Gaming, so I bought it, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. Like I, ha- I have an issue with the GTA style games, especially yeah. Grand Theft Autos. Um, like Saints Row Third is a totally different animal, um, and that kind of brought me back to that style of game, and I, I really love that. And so I was kind of hesitant about Sleeping Dogs, but I'm finding like the combat is really satisfying. It's more like uh, Batman, like Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. Um, than it is GTA. Um, don't have a gun yet. We're about maybe two, three hours in. I think you do get guns later. Oh, you don't but need it, guns. You don't need guns when you know martial arts. Yeah. And it looks gorgeous on the PC. I highly recommend it. And you can get it for cheap. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's fun. Like, it's just, it's like a gang story. Like, you, you infiltrate this gang, you're a cop, you infiltrate this gang, and then you, you know, obviously it's heading towards you bringing it down from the inside. Uh, but it's, yeah, I, I I enjoy it. I know it kind of everybody who's played it seems seems to like it, but it kind of went under the radar a little yep. bit. Um, well, it yeah, should have it been. it should have been terrible. It should have been really terrible. <laughs> it should yeah. have never come out. Like, I think yeah. what Activ I think Act- this is one of those games that Activision kind of let go because they just didn't see the potential of it. I could be wrong there. Uh, I forget who yeah. the original publisher was before Square picked it up, but um. It um, I still I still I have not played this game yet, and I just kind of wonder with, you know, my acclimation towards Just Cause Two and Saints Row, um, like th- where this game kind of fits in. I think it must it has to stand apart on the martial arts alone. Is that kind of your take? Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, there's definitely driving, and there's you know the missions set up that's very like that type of game format. Um, 
but it just it feels a lot different to me. Like it feels different enough to be to be fresh, even though I think that genre's a little stale. Yeah. Um, but I, I recommend it. Like so, even if you, it's cheap enough you can just buy it and play it for three hours just to get you know a taste of it. And, uh, see if you like it. Question whatever. from chat: uh, Is it is it good bad or is it just good? No, it's just good. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of my interpretation, yeah. but it was a, a good question. Like, you ca- I kind of everybody kind of loves just calls, kind of tongue in cheek. So I was, uh, I didn't right. actually I know think, where. I think it's better than that. I think it's better than that. Okay, but and so it's gonna tide you over till Grand Theft Auto V, correct? Well, I'm not gonna buy Grand Theft Auto Five, so yeah. Be curious who breaks on our site for getting that game. Somebody's gonna have to play it, right? We can can we make uh, Ethan be- do it? No, Ethan won't do it. It'll be Aaron. Okay. <laughs> Aaron's um, getting it. Let's see. What did Chad have to say today? Ver- Verdian has been playing Quarantine, which is a PC game from 95, and said he, because it, uh, I guess it kind of reminded him of Remember Me, or Remember Me got, in the, got him in the mood for it. I don't think I know about this game, but, um, and kind of wishes that it had been an open world game. So I'll have to look. Look that one up. Uh, Jordan has been playing Fez. Beat the game in 15 hours. Uh, finished it at 209.4%. Oh my god. Thanks to the internet. So. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Hopefully that was rewarding. I, I mean, back to that game. After, you can put about 8 hours into it, I feel. Um, and then... Like and, and have a pretty satisfying experience, but you're gonna start hitting your head against the wall. So you kind of you, you either make that decision. I think if you're gonna look something up, either like look one thing up and never go back, or just go go all out. But um, he said it was amazing. So oh, that's cool. Um, and then Michael Dean's uh, game of the week is Dust and Elysian Tale. Since uh, we I think we talked about that last time you were on the show, Cole. That that's out on yeah. PC. So uh, yes. Yeah. That game is fantastic. Support the, the solo developer there. Um, and I think I have to give a nod because Guild Wars 2 is always Verdian's game of the week. And I know for a fact that that game has pretty much stolen the life of Aaron McNeil on our site. So um, that's still in the rotation. My game of the week, though. Um, so I went over to our buddy Josh Lee's place and we're, we were... Uh, going through his main cabinet and, and trying to play some old school games. And just out of the blue, we decided to beat Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Good choice. <laughs> and, um, as with a lot of these games on his his machine, like, I don't... Every time I would play these games in the arcade, you know, you only put so many quarters into them. You never really get far enough to see everything. This game is it's ridiculous. First of all, we were trying to think of, like another arcade game or a game from that era that was had that isometric view like so there's the moonwalker arcade game which is isometric and then there's the moonwalker game on sega genesis that's just 2d side scrolling so yeah. the but the isometric view in this art in the arcade version is it's pretty pretty unique like it it's like you know like a really retro diablo uh with much more simplified um um mechanics but um so it's just a beat em up but beyond all the you know the crazy things associated with moonwalker in general um the some of the highlights for us we, we discovered that not only do they have all these weird en- enemies you're fighting and they're all kind of like you know robotic dudes that actually the game actually kind of reminds me a little bit of narc as far as the enemies you fight um i forget the plot of moonwalker but other than him steal joe pesci stealing a bunch of kids but anyway, yeah, doesn't he have to rescue a bunch of kids and then yeah. smooth criminal plays all the time? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you can turn into a robot and like you basically shoot dudes with laser beams or like yeah. And also, don't you like call down the sun too or a spotlight? Call down, oh, cause it, yeah, your special move is to dance. And kind of what I was getting at is, so they make all these weird characters, and every character in the game has a dance animation, <laughs> and it is it is ridiculous. Um, and um, of course, there are these these. Certain types of mechs that, um, how can I describe this? They they basically, uh, their attack is to thrust a giant pole, like, out of their midsection. Um, like, a, just kind of hitting you with a giant column. 
but it just kind of moves back and forth. So you can imagine what their dance move is, and uh, that was a little weird. Um, and then Bubbles, the monkey, is in this game, and he's what turns you into the Michael Jackson robot. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a ton of memories of that game, except for going down to Clarksville, Indiana, to the River Falls Mall. <laughs> and there are they had like an arcade upstairs like that was like the whole floor and I remember it was the two no, games that really stand out to me are Moonwalker and Dragon's Lair. And I just remember Moonwalker always having a line, so it was it was always occupied whenever I wanted to play it. Whenever I had a lot of quarters to try, so I never really got a, a good shot at it. Um, the game isn't good. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, it's really it? it's really repetitive. Sega made it. Well, okay, it, Sega. Here, here's the other funny thing. So, <laughs> oh, I forget whenever this game was made. So we beat the game and the credits roll. First of all, the credits just start off with uh, listing off all the stages and the Michael Jackson song that played during that stage. And then it says, uh, game designed and developed by Michael Jackson. And then it oh. scrolls up a little bit, and it shows the Sega logo. And that's oh. it. So no other credits to any other person that worked on the game. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so uh, that was that was kind of funny. Uh, I, like, we've been... There's a ton of weird games, so kind of expect. I will, I'll try to pepper in some random arcade games into our Game of the Week discussions. But um, nice. before we do our Worst of the Week in Gaming... Um, what have you uh, been reading on our site? So, uh, an old, old, old gentleman on the site, um, one of the original writers, um, and he's not that old because he's just a month older than you in, in terms of age. Thanks. But, and, yeah. yeah. I was laughing Ethan's, until I realized how much it related to myself. Ethan's eldest brother, Nathan, um, has been playing... A ridiculous. Here's here's Nathan's here's Nathan's games that he plays. Apparently, Dark Souls and World of Tanks. And that's it. That's it. We did get him. We did get him into some plant side too. Oh, that's right. We did. Uh, we had to beg him like four times to even download the game, though. Uh, but World of Tanks, he's almost like a professional World of Tanks player because he gets he gets like paid to play it now. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like seriously games money. Yeah, like he's a part of this um, huge. Like corporation in the game, I don't know what they're called, clan or huh. outfit or whatever. Right. But he gets paid in in-game currency to play. He just showed up in chat, so be careful. Oh uh, well, I don't want to ruin his uh, his shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he has been playing. He knew I was about to talk. I, I called him right before this to say I'm about to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, or talk about you and your Dark Souls idiocy, 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 idiocy. Now I'm talking like Ethan, who can't talk. I don't think you're coming off very well on this so far. I'm not. Anyway, <laughs> let's go back to Dark Souls. So Nathan writes a review of Dark Souls, um, and he, the way he phrased everything almost got me. Almost? To want to play it. <laughs> almost. And then um, my clear head, or my... my uh, Your yeah, better judgment? My better judgment. This heat's getting to me. I can't think. <laughs> My better judgment decided to rise up and say, what the fuck, dude? All you're going to do if you get that game is break controllers. <laughs> and break your computer, break your monitor, hurt your dog, all these things. It's expensive DLC. Yeah. So I decided against it, and I decided that my experience with Dark Souls mm -hmm. will just reside in Nathan's review. <laughs> so I'm, he did I'm, say like the la the line that stuck out to me was like it will the game will reward you if you put the time into it. So it's, but you got to know what you're getting into. So uh, he loved it. It was a fun review to read. Um, I was like, God, he put so much out, so many hours into it. I want to say 125 plus. Dude, that's gotta... the thing with the Moses brothers. Like they will play a lot of games, but there are those like certain games where they will just play the shit out of him. Like, Ethan Fallout 3. Like, 100 hours. His, his brother Matthew, I think the same thing for Fallout 3. 100 plus hours. like, Or even Oblivion. 100 plus hours. Like, Jesus Christ, dudes. What? 
Skyrim, he just wrote in chat, Skyrim 330 hours. You gotta be fucking kidding me. That's insane. <laughs> so yeah, that's where you are, your advice, or at least you know the backstory of where the review for Dark Souls is coming from. So uh, I did get a 5 out of 5 from him. So yeah. um, I gotta go back and see how many perfect scores we've got. We've probably got, I think, 4 or 5. So um, yeah, wait, Let me paint a picture real quick. Nathan put 330 hours into Skyrim. He's married and he has twins who are like Three, almost three years old. But I don't how know, does think, he do it? Think about I don't know. Think about if you only played one game at a time. True. <laughs> I I understand where he's coming from. I'm and I'm kind of jealous. I just never. I'm just never. I've never done that. Like I think I'm just jealous too. Like I've never been able to take that much time with a game without getting bored of it or. Just you know, like if I put that much out, out, that many hours into, uh, I don't know. I can't even think of a game that I would want to do that with, like <laughs> Symphony of the Night. I couldn't play it that long. It doesn't like, have that much content. I know, but I mean, I've probably played it forty hours total of, of all the times <laughs> I've played it combined over the <laughs> almost twenty years that that game has been out. But Jesus, that's. Insane. Well, I hope you find that game because I know you tried to play Skyrim and that didn't happen. But, yeah, but I'm actually I mean, thinking I'll... about going back to it now that I have a PC. It's worth a shot, but um, if you go down for three, if you go down for three hundred thirty hours, I think we're going to run out of stuff to talk about on this show. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for real. <laughs> I, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't know how Ethan puts that much time in there and has time. Well, I mean, he doesn't have a job, but <laughs> and, and has that much time to play all these other games. But yeah, my issue with Skyrim was more of my Xbox kept crashing. Oh, it, so yeah, it's been it's been patched a couple times since then. Maybe it'll if it gets under like fifteen bucks, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, Nathan reiterated that horrible night is Ethan's job. That is true. Yeah. So, uh, my. Uh, I want to give a little bit of a shout out to Aaron's uh, recent uh, edition of Radio Waves from last week because he's been kind of playing with the format of the um, of the series. Usually, he just kind of recaps what he's been playing, but because he's only been playing Guild Wars two, um, he just told told a tale uh, that uh, went into great detail about his hunt for the tentacle suit in that game, and uh, I was really. I was really enter- entertained by it. He 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 was actually trying to talk to me about it, but I don't know something about um, actually being able to to read it without any distraction and understand what he was going through to try to capture um, you know spend hours doing a jump a jumping puzzle in an MMO. Just I felt his pain by the end, uh, and I I hope he does more of these little short stories in that. So uh, you can check out he does the radio wave his radio wave series every other Friday so you can check that out on this on horriblenight.com um, yes it's really enjoyable he's uh yeah um, and I think he's he's working on a few new reviews coming up as well um, our worst of the week in gaming just something that's been bugging you about the industry or something you'd like to change uh, recently what you got Cole well mine is sort of tongue in cheek. But I hate this fucker. It's the return of Tom Nook. <laughs> this Sunday on the 3DS. This Sunday, the Slumlord has returned. So if you guys don't know who Tom Nook is, he is the... Um, antagonist of... <laughs> antagonist of Animal Crossing games. If there is and, one. And, yeah, like, he's just constantly on your case to farm your crops, right? And... Pay him back, man. You pay him, he, pay him his pay him his money, basically. He, as soon as you upgrade your house that he lent lent to you, he you owe him money for upgrading your house. It's just an endless deadly cycle. So, but I've never played Animal Crossing. This this knowledge is just from watching Justin play it. <laughs> but he is probably one of my most hated characters <laughs> in video gaming. I just love how it's built up over the years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Every chance I get to call him a slumlord, I do it. I I I wish this was. I don't know. Uh, the the initial reviews seem solid. I'd say another good Animal Crossing game, but it is Animal Crossing, so they're not really changing too much. But um, if you do go after Animal Crossing, and if you have played before, 
I would recommend playing with friends rather than trying to solo it because it's not going to feel all that different. But apparently, I think one of the twists is you can owe money to more than just Tom Nook, it sounds like. So he's not your your sole debt collector in this. Oh my god. So you can hate other people. But so that game's coming out. That that'll be that'll be fun. Um Let's see, worst of the week from chat. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Ta- there was a Gama Sutra article, uh, Verdian points this out, about uh, demos Demos are dead. Oh, I forget who he said. Let me see who wrote this. It was from a recent developer. Uh, it was essentially just going into um, what, what the point of game demos are and the fact that video has basically replaced the point of them. And... Uh, I would kind of agree with that. Um, Verdian said, I, I realize demos are indeed dead for AAA titles. Only indie titles uh, seem to need to release demos if you check on Steam. Uh, the demo was replaced by videos. I miss trying out my games. Um, yeah, with his, with the advent of so many uh, Let's Play type of videos out there, it's you can get a pretty good taste for a game without playing it, but um, I don't know. I feel like open betas and that sort of thing have replaced demos more so too because games are you're getting to play a lot of these indie games prior to launch or their price gets knocked down so low it just you know the difference between you playing a demo and dropping five or ten bucks i i I don't know i don't know and i sometimes don't need the the demo to make that decision do you miss demos cole not really like i thought that was before um, I kind of got on the PC. I would play a lot of demos, um, just on PS3 and mm-hmm. well, not so much PS3 because they took forever to download. But on the Xbox, I would definitely download a ton of demos, and I just I don't know when I stopped, but it just kind of I never noticed. I, yeah, I never notice it or look for it on Steam. It was nice on Xbox Live Arcade because you knew that demo was always there, yeah. um, and it's more of. A lot of it was just confirming my suspicions, but like I said, if a game's ten bucks or under, I don't think I even need the demo. It's more of those ten to twenty dollar purchases that, yeah, if I can try it out. But if I can't try it out, my natural instinct is to go seek out a video and see uh, if it kind of just confirms what I think the game might be. But um, yeah, it's a uh, another change with everything going digital, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then Jordan points out some old news, but he just kind of. Uh, realized they pulled the plug on Prey 2, which was one of the most amazing demos I, I saw at PAX a couple years ago. Uh, the newest rumor is that the Dishonored team might actually be working on Prey 2. Um, but yeah, the uh, track down a video of that demo, I believe I actually wrote about it on the site, and there might be a video linked to it from there. Um, but it was, he compared it to look like a fun version of Mirror's Edge, which I didn't think so, with, which, I, which didn't, <laughs> which I didn't uh, think about, I mean, but it, it kind of made sense because there's a lot of, like, first-person, um, like, parkour traversal in, in, in the game, and uh, yeah. and they, they had a really interesting open world for a first-person shooter, and uh, I, th- there were so many good ideas in that demo. We're going to see that pop back up at some point, whether it's Prey 2 or just something else that, you know, that ZeniMax Bethesda publish, but... Um, it's it that whole development story about that game kind of uh, crashing and burning is uh, kind of sad. Yeah, and it seems like nobody like it's been offered to other studios too, and everybody said no. So maybe uh, the Dishonored team got forced to do it, but let's see, we'll see. I'm advising. Uh, see, Mike the Dean said that Tom Nook will sell us demos if we need them, but uh, don't buy anything from Tom Nook, uh, even if it's free. That's my that's my advice. Nothing's um, free with that guy. Um, let's see. My uh, my worst of the week. Um, something I read about this afternoon. Um, one of my favorite uh, XBLA games, uh, Dishwasher. Um, I believe actually the sequel um, is what they're talking about here. But uh, Scott Studios um, m- made these uh, action games, and they're ex- they're still Xbox Live Arcade exclusives, and some Russian pirate was offended by that and made a PC port of the dishwasher games, which, you know, um, sometimes you can sympathize with some pirates cases about, um, you know, 
somebody like holding back a game or that sort of thing. And it, but basically taking money from an indie developer the size of Ska, Ska Studios and then Which pointing is a lot at like them. Three people. Yeah, it's yeah, it's essentially two people. But yeah, um, yeah. they uh, and they were they said basically they were kind of sh- trying to shame them for not bringing it to the PC and just kind of not really understanding that studio exists because of the publishing support of Microsoft. So like, even if you are going to attack anybody in this case, attack, like it, the, the vault's more on Microsoft and not building up that side, the, you know, uh, games for windows live and making some of that stuff readily available, but to attack an indie developer, the size of Scott studios, um, and try to, you know, claim higher moral ground was just, it was, it was pretty gross to read about. It's definitely a misguided use of his time. <laughs> Um, let's move on to your best of the week in gaming, Cole. So, again, this is kind of... <gasps> you bastard. No, don't talk yeah. about this. Well, I didn't buy it, but <laughs> you posted a tweet. Oh, shit. And... I did. <laughs> and what's really funny is, before that, I saw that I was messing around on my PlayStation, like, thinking about buying some PS1 games, seeing what's on PS Plus, especially for the Vita. Mm-hmm. Then I decided, well, why don't I just get an emulator of the PS1 games on my computer? So I did that, but they kind of look terrible. Yeah. Um, I mean, I got, like, 360 controller to work on it and everything, but it's just, if I want it to look good, I have to play it in a really small window. And so then I was like, well, maybe... Maybe I'll just get a Vita. And I was like, wow, I'm being fucking ridiculous right (laughs) now. (laughs) And so that kind of went out of the back burner a little bit. And then I saw this $50, you get a $50 um, gift card with the purchase of the Vita. And I'm like, man, that'll... Yeah, from like, from Amazon, Best Buy, and Walmart, like everybody was offering it. And then, then I was thinking to myself... Do I really need another handheld just to play retro games? Because yeah. I have a 3DS mm-hmm. that I basically play retro games on. I have a Wii U that I basically play retro games on. Do I need the third system to play retro games? <laughs> and Nathan's telling me no. But I'm thinking that I might. <laughs> <laughs> don't you're you're talking to the wrong guy then like i'm I know, not gonna I talk you out of it i know because but i'm waiting until e3 to make that decision okay what are you gonna find out at e3 if they drop the price oh, okay if they if they make it 150 here's my question then if they are make they, it 150 dollars are they really gonna drop it more than 50 bucks no so, so i'm i'm talking myself out of it by realizing that they're not gonna do it so no they're yeah I'm I'm safe. <laughs> I ever since I posted or saw that that deal, I have tried to stop my the train in my mind from continuing that thought process because I will talk myself into it. I, eventually, I hit the wall with I don't really play my 3DS all that much. So yeah, just because it's a too. handheld device doesn't mean I'm gonna it's gonna be more convenient for me. But the, I mean, it's tempting. Just so so many PSN games on that thing. Um, you know, I would probably play Guacamelee more than more on that than uh, going out of my way to hook up my PS3 because that's usually sure. my hurdle is just um, not always having all those systems hooked up. But but it seemed like a good deal because the other hurdle with buying a Vita is buying that memory card right out of the gate. Yeah, that's so, the big and that's thing. what it would cover. So, oh man. Um, but the Vita's looking looking pretty good, and I'm really curious to see how they keep beefing that up for the PlayStation Four. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you can play off screen on the Vita, like it's going to stream yep. to. Yep. PS4 is going to stream to the Vita, so. Yeah, I wonder how laggy. I hope it's not laggy, but that'll be the kind of the, the uh, the real test there. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's stupid. I, I understand it's up. really fucking stupid, <laughs> but I like new shit, man. <laughs> I oh, oh yeah, I mean that's that's always the draw, doesn't. It's always fun to come home uh, with that in your with the new the new electronic device in your hand. So yeah, um, Verdian's best of the week. Uh, 
is the last cube of the Curiosity game from Peter Molyneux. It was 22 cans. was finally broken and the prize was revealed. I forget how long people were working on this uh, thing. Uh, the prize was revealed to the to the one winner, and they basically had the choice of of sharing the prize. The prize ended up being a video of Peter Molyneux, <laughs> basically Yay. saying thanks and informing this this individual player that he will become the god and goddess or goddess uh, twenty two cans next next game, which seems like it's a pseudo spiritual sequel to Populous. Uh, if anybody played yeah. that. Um, so he's going to be the 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 initial god of this game and set the rules of the world. So isn't that kind of like black and white? Uh, a little bit, but you don't really have that. You don't really have that like giant animal avatar. Like it's more okay. you're you're cultivating the land and changing. What was that? Earth. What was that game that came out for PSN um, like last year, or two years ago? That was very similar to that. Are you um, thinking of? Uh, oh, Dust? Before Elysian Tale, just Dust. And dust? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That was the last God game I played anyway. Hey, it's JoshLee.com. What's up, Josh? Hello, and Josh. Uh, more people showing up in chat here. Um, I... You know, Molyneux is enter- entertaining. The video was about as weird as you could have expected. And honestly, the prize for... Curiosity was uh, um, more interesting than I thought. It was just gonna be some, you know, something really meta or just like not tangible at all. So um, it's it is cool. It was a fun little experiment uh, to kind of watch evolve. Probably went on a little bit too long, but yeah, it'd be cool to see if uh, that game is very successful, like financially, to see how much that dude gets the. Oh yeah, he does. He gets like some of the profits of that game. He too, gets some though. of the profits for a year, and yeah. then they, I guess they switch. Yeah, yeah. So you're, yeah. You're get, I mean, depending on if it's like a free to play, free to play with you know microtransactions, it's not going to last very long. And I think they and, said that he downloaded Curiosity like that day. So. Oh really? What a dick. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, not his fault, but it's really. No, it's not. It's kind of funny. Uh, let's see. Jordan's uh, best of the week is the launch of Remember Me. He doesn't really care about the reviews. It sounds like, but it reminds him of the game Oni, and uh, that's a good oh, okay. thing. That makes sense. I man, I was I was hoping that this would be kind of a you know a, a surprise hit. Um, the trailers are really interesting for Remember Me, but it sounds like it kind of like Fuse ended up being kind of generic and um, and nothing really new to offer other than it's uh this one at least has you know style and interesting setting but apparently the gameplay gets in the way so. i didn't really know, hear much about it and then i saw it on steam like um, two months ago and i was like yeah, what is just, this? it looks cool but yeah capcom just kind of pushed it to the side a little bit there um my best of the week is the release of mega ran's latest album um Always le- basically mixing hip hop with classic games, games music, and this time he took finally took on Symphony of the Night and yes. Castlevania: The Nocturnal Cantata is available on Bandcamp now. Um, you actually introduced me to Mega Ran. I did not yeah, know his that Black Materia album that was yep. Final Fantasy. Seven. His Final Fantasy, and then I went back listened to all, all his Mega Man stuff. Um, had no idea that at the time that. You know, mixing hip hop and video game music was a thing that would be good, and it's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. I tagged you in it in Twitter. Have you got to check it out yet? I I have not. Um, I just pulled it up right now. So for the rest of the podcast, I'll be listening to it. Oh, good. Uh, instead, of, <laughs> instead of talking. Okay. All right. Um, no. Um, yeah, I need to check it out. I really like the Black Materia album. So cool. for sure, the dude has a good flow. All right. We are going to get out of here with uh, one last question of the week. Uh, so what do you, E3 is next week. We're going to do a couple special podcasts um, after the press conferences and, toward, and then towards the end of the week. But um, what are you actually looking forward to out of E3? I'm interested to see what Nintendo has to say with their Nintendo Direct, not surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Um, just because... It's kind of been. There's not a lot out there. Like they have like 
um, shadows on their website of what they're going to be talking about, and it's kind of boring, so I'm hoping they have something. Like, obviously, they're going to talk about a new 3D Mario. And then, <laughs> Josh is predicting uh, a new 2D Metroid. <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, they're going to talk about Pikmin, I'm sure. But, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm really interested to see what Sony has in store for the PS4. I think Microsoft had a lot more specifics to announce in their thing. Um, and then now it's going to be the games. But yeah, let's hope. It, for those people who are interested in Xbox One, but I think I'm, I'm more interested to find out what Sony ha- has to offer. Yeah, I'd, I'd I think say. they've been killing it the past couple of years at their E3 press conferences. If they've actually been had, having interesting. I wouldn't say killing say. it, but like, say, well, compared to the other two, I, I would been say solid. killing it. It's, it's been, they've been solid. solid, and I always like to see Jack Tritton. So uh, <laughs> he's going to kill somebody. I always say <laughs> my prediction every year is he's going to kill somebody on stage. <laughs> I, so just year, I, I just want to see him punch. I see him punch somebody in the face. Yeah. Bring back Kevin Butler just to punch him in the face and yeah. send him back to Firestone. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm actually. I think. I think you're right. I'm look, looking forward to. Sony actually has the last press conference. Like all of them are crammed into Monday. Like it's basically oh. all day Monday. And then they used, um, they used to spread them out a little bit. Yeah, so they're all getting in beforehand. Hey, I is mean, it Konami's I, thing happening this week though? Yeah, Konami's is yes. sometime this week. So. Yes. Um, and I'll, I'll be curious to see what happens with Ubisoft this year too. But um, I mean, as I think Microsoft will, will put on a good show. It'll just be all about the games, which is cool. Um, but I, the reason Sony interests me is one, I'm kind of up on the PS4 uh, at this point, and then um, uh, I they also are. This is their first chance to kind of respond to Microsoft, and they get to respond right. to them like. At the end of E3, at, at the end of these press conferences, so I'm I'm curious to see what else they got, because yeah, I, for sure. I'm I'm sure they didn't reveal it all, so um, that'll be that'll be curious, um, and I don't know, I could I'm kind of indifferent to uh, Nintendo. I mean, it's more like morbid curiosity to see how they um, bounce back, but maybe they announce a new console. <sighs> Do they have money to do that? They still nope. have a nope. They don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I yeah, don't. I don't know. Like that, I'm. I usually get really pumped for E3, and I'm just kind of tepid about it this year. This is a new console year. Come on. I know, but we've already they've already announced them. Like that's the part. Like they used to keep that to their close to their chest until uh, E3, and now they both got ahead of it. So uh, my excitement isn't as up there i guess my last question for you is are you petting a dog right now i'm trying to distract the dog with a toy and okay pulling it so yes i just wanted to explain right all of the movement on <laughs> <Like> my arm <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. that's gonna that's gonna do it for top video game podcast this week um the thanks to everybody in chat that submitted uh your questions of the week or your answers of the week and we'll be back with another episode next week we'll see you later